Number 104. There are three possible structures for PCL2F3 with phosphorus as the central atom. Draw them and discuss how measurements of dipole moments could help distinguish among them. Okay. So we have three different possible structures, and I noticed that for this compound, right, we have phosphorus, chlorine, and fluorine. They are all nonmetals, so the possible structures that we have to draw are the Lewis structures. Now, we just have to draw, draw three different ones, but all of them have phosphorus as the central atom. So that's what I'm gonna start. I'm gonna draw my three structures, and we have phosphorus in the middle, so P, P, and P. Now, for each one of them, it seems that these elements are around the phosphorus. I have two chlorines, and I have three fluorines. So that means that I have a total of five bonds to the single atom, right? This, the central atom. So for each one of them, I'm going to just draw a single bond just to show that I have my five um, bonds around the atoms. So generally speaking, since five, um, well, I guess we'll kind of do it like this. If we go by the molecular geometry, an atom, a central atom who has five single bonds, is a molecular geometry of uh, trigonal bipyramidal. So generally, the structures will have like these three bonds that are at 90 degree angles, and then you have these two, whoop, then you have these two sticking out at 120. So that's what I'm going to do. It kind of looks like a person, <laughs> right? Here's the arms, and here are the legs. We have the arms and the legs. And now all we have to do is just divvy up the two chlorines and the three fluorines around the central atom. And we have to do them differently. So let's see, for the first one, I don't know, I have a pair of chlorines and maybe I'll put the pair of chlorines on the legs here so that they're closer to the legs. So maybe I'll say CL and CL. Okay. The next one, I can't really put them, you know, here because that would be the same compound as the other one. So maybe we'll stagger them. Maybe I'll put the one chlorine here, or I could have put the, you know, the one chlorine here, and maybe I'll put them right next to each other like this. And this would have been the same if you put the two chlorines on this side. And now I just have to divvy up one other one. Um, I guess, I mean, we can try to put the chlorine maybe over here. That would be a little bit different. So let's just see if when we put the fluorine, if we do have um, three different structures. So for the first one, I have my three fluorines, one, two, and three. Okay, cool. Um, I have one fluorine, one fluorine, and one fluorine, that's three. And then I have one fluorine, one fluorine, and one fluorine. All right, and if we have to finish out the Lewis structure, just remember that for all of your halogens, the fluorines and the chlorines, they should all have six lone electrons around the, um, the each atoms. But, but since I'm gonna have to draw these dots for you know three separate um, drawings, that might take a lot of time. So we're just gonna assume that they're there. Now, in order to, to uh, talk about the dipole moments, you don't really need those lone electrons anyway. Now, just know that a dipole moment is just a fancy way of saying that somewhere in your molecule, there's an uneven distribution of charge. And the charge comes from the uneven distribution of electrons, which comes from electronegative elements. So if you have a dipole moment, you are a polar molecule. And remember, polar molecules are asymmetrical. There is no line of symmetry in that molecule. And if there's something that is asymmetrical, there has to be a pull from one, you know, one side to another. 
So, in terms of the first one, we just have to find out if this is nonpolar or if this is polar, right? The polar molecules are asymmetrical and they have a dipole moment. Now you just have to find one line of symmetry. So in this case, we could always draw the line of symmetry right down the atom. And maybe what I'll do is I'll maybe put it in a different color. Maybe we'll do this. Now, when you're doing that, right, it's perfectly legal to draw your line of symmetry down a atom. If you're drawing your line of symmetry down an atom, you pretend that basically these uh, don't exist, right? You're cutting them down. They're basically the same for both sides. So you only look at what's going on on the left and the right side. Now, if we're looking at this compound, I notice that on the one side, I have fluorines and fluorines. And since they're on like an X axis, remember that a fluorine is the most electronegative element. So it's always going to be pulling the electrons in that bond towards the fluorine because you're no more electronegative than fluorine. But if you have a direct left pole and you have a direct right pole, these two will cancel out. But then I see that I have these chlorines that are only on the bottom side of the molecule. But I don't have any chlorines on the top to cancel out these chlorines. So because there's no pole that's on the other side, this would be classified as polar because you have an overall pole going down to the chlorines. So we definitely have a dipole moment here. Now let's just see the other one, right? If we draw down the line of symmetry here, we still have no sense of symmetry. Now on this case, the left side has the chlorines and the right side have the fluorines. So in this case, since fluorine is more electronegative, this side will be overpowering than this side because the more electronegative you are, the more pull. So as the chlorines are pulling towards the left side, the fluorines are pulling towards the right side and the fluorines will win. So in this case, this definitely is going to be polar and it has a dipole moment. However, if we're trying to actually measure those dipole moments, right, which one would have a higher dipole moment? Would it be the ones that are favoring the chlorines or would it be the ones that are favoring the fluorines? It's definitely the one that's going to be favoring the fluorines because more electronegative, the higher the dipole moment. So for this one, we would definitely have a higher dipole moment. And this one, maybe we'll say we have a lower dipole moment. Now for the last one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of rewrite this one and I'm going to just rotate it to the right just a little bit where everyone is going to be shifted over. Now you're probably going to use this type of uh, internal thinking if you guys reach organic chemistry, because just remember, or just know that these molecules are never stagnant. They're turning, they're twisting. So just as like the fluorine that you drew here is on the left side, this molecule can turn and the fluorine would then be kind of like in the front position. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of just rewrite this one a little bit just to show you that, okay, let's just say we had a fluorine here, a fluorine here and here, and the chlorines are now going to be on this side. Okay. Now for this one, if we look for that line of symmetry, we do see that on the X axis, as the chlorine is pulling to the left, Another chlorine is pouring, you know, pulling to the right. So these would cancel out. 
And since we have now all fluorines in a 120, because think of the bond angles here, right? For just three bonds, it's basically trigonal planar, if we're not counting these bonds. Um, and if it's all 120, the fluorine that is up above is being split equally between the two fluorines down below in terms of polarity. So this one that's pulling straight up is being dispersed evenly between the two fluorines that are going down at an angle. So when you do draw the line of symmetry, it's symmetrical. So in this case, this one would be nonpolar because the chlorines cancel out and then the one fluorine cancels out nice and even between the two fluorines down below. And this one would have no dipole moment. Nonpolar means symmetrical and no dipole moment. So we have one that would have a zero as a dipole moment and then we have these two which are polar but the fluorine will always pull more, so we know that this one has a higher dipole than the other one. And I think that's it, right? So there you go, guys. I really hope this helped out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for coming to the channel. I hope you're having a great day out there. Tell your classmates, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon, all right? Okay, bye-bye.